This is an incredibly expensive memory card that's also a total waste of money. This is an incredibly cheap memory card that would probably also be a total waste of money. First, let's talk about size. These are the memory cards that we use, a capacity that was completely undreamed of just a few years ago. Yeah, my camera is 60 megapixels, but I still don't really need 256 gigs for any one day of shooting, but I like to have enough capacity to shoot multiple days at a time. The number one thing I don't wanna do is run out of space. It still happens sometimes and it can really screw you up when suddenly your camera says memory card full. Then you have to stop what you're doing, try to find another card or go back and delete some photos that you don't really wanna keep and then you take a couple pictures and you fill it up again. So I hate filling up my memory card and that's why I'd rather just spend a few extra bucks and get an absolutely massive card. It's like cheap insurance, but it's also cheap insurance in another way. When I unload my memory card, I used to always reformat it so it would always be empty, but now I keep using the same memory card with the same old files on there as long as possible until I get close to filling it up. Why? Because it's an extra backup for me. Sometimes I've copied my pictures to my computer and then something will happen. They'll be accidentally deleted or a hard drive will fail. I always have this other backup. Even though my main card is huge, I still own some really small, cheap cards. Cards like these, I'll stash one in my glove box. I'll keep extras in my camera bag, my office desk, anywhere I might be shooting. Why? In case I fill up my main memory card, at least I'll be able to quickly swap to something else and be able to keep shooting. It might not be ideal, but it's a lot better than nothing. It's also good when a memory card fails. You can take out the failed memory card, put it somewhere safe so you can recover the files from it, and then keep shooting with your cheap card. The reason I'm telling you to buy a bunch of cheap cards instead of just buying a bunch of high-end cards to stash as backups is that not everybody has unlimited money. That's something I have to explain to some of our viewers who aren't so economically minded. As long as we're talking about SD cards failing, let me say SD cards do fail. We personally did the largest poll I've ever seen of photographers discussing the eventuality of memory card failures. And in our poll, about half the photographers polled had had at least one card fail at some point during their career. Based on the people polled, about 47% of people had had a memory card failure, which photographers who taken more than 1 million pictures had about a 75% chance of having had at least one card fail. And many of them had had many cards fail. That includes us. We take care of our memory cards. We generally use professionally graded memory cards but those things don't matter. Any memory card can fail regardless of the brand. We personally buy more than a thousand memory cards a year because we'll copy our eBooks like Stunning Digital Photography onto SD cards for people who aren't able to download things easily offline. And I try to make the memory cards inexpensive to purchase, so I buy the least expensive functioning memory cards without regard to brand. And you know what, we have almost a 0% failure rate. And that includes supporting people after they receive them, after they've been through the postal service. In other words, even super cheap off-brand memory cards are just fine. Because our studies have shown that memory cards do fail regardless of how you handle the memory cards or which brands you use, I strongly suggest finding a camera with two memory card slots and using both of them if you take pictures that you can't afford to lose. If you're just taking snapshots and you're not going to be heartbroken if a memory card fails, that's fine, use a single memory card slot. But if you are a professional photographer getting paid for your work, especially if you're shooting events that you cannot easily recreate, like a wedding, please, please, please write to two memory cards and back them up as soon as possible. I've talked to too many heartbroken brides and grooms who didn't get any pictures because of a simple memory card failure that could have been prevented. One second, right now we're having a Valentine's Day sale where you can get 31% off our famous stunning digital photography book with 20 hours of video, that's the latest edition. Our Photoshop training, which can make a huge impact on your pictures. Our Lightroom Classic book with 14 hours of video or our video training. For example, our professional portrait training series, our art and science of photography training videos and our Lightroom presets. Get all this stuff directly from us at northrop.photo using this coupon code. Here's the most ridiculous trend I've seen, tough memory cards. They cost a lot more because they're built up and 
quite a bit thicker than a normal memory card. They're also lacking this little locking mechanism, which is actually a pain. And while I have had the locking mechanism break on me and have to tape it up to have the memory card become writable again, I've never had a card physically fail otherwise, and I was never asking for a card that I could stomp on or dump in the dirt. Like, those aren't problems that happen to me. It seems like a marketing gimmick, and it's actually so thick that it gets stuck in our Sony cameras, and we have to physically like grab it with our fingers and pull it out. Like the spring isn't strong enough to spring it out. So don't buy the tough cards. I can do that because it's like indestructible. In just one minute, I'm gonna get really nerdy and talk about all the details of card speed. It's more complex than you might think. But first I wanna talk about a couple of myths I've heard. People tell me you can't delete pictures from a memory card, that it will cause failure, and I trace this urban legend back to some early digital camera that had a bug in the software where if you deleted pictures, it could corrupt the index on the memory card and then your pictures would become inaccessible. But no modern camera that I've seen in the last 15 years exhibits this problem. The other myth I hear is people think that formatting the memory card actually erases the pictures. Formatting a memory card or a computer disk is like tearing out the table of contents from a book the book is still all there, you would just have to manually flip page by page by page to find everything. Recovery software allows you to recover all the pictures from a formatted memory card unless it is securely formatted, which is never the default option because secure formatting could take 15 minutes, 20 minutes, it would take a long time. So if your formatting is happening in less than a minute, it's an insecure format. Just be aware of that. Like if you've taken some pictures you don't wanna share with the world, don't then give that memory card to somebody else without going through the trouble of putting it in a computer and getting secure formatting software. It's not safe. Time to get nerdy and talk about the speed of the memory cards. And I'm sorry this even has to be a nerdy discussion, but it's not at all straightforward. First of all, let's look at this memory card. See how it says 40 MB slash S? That means 40 megabytes per second reading speed, theoretically, not practically. It's almost a useless metric. If your memory card has only one number written on it, that is not the writing speed, that is the speed at which you could copy pictures from the card to your computer, but that's not what you really care about. What you care about is how fast your camera can write pictures to the card. Let me demonstrate. Let's put that cheap memory card in my camera. Now let's take some pictures. You'll notice on the left side there, that white line, that represents the buffer in the camera. The buffer is where the camera stores pictures before it writes them to the memory card. Now in the corner there, you can see its count as it writes those pictures to the memory card. With that slow memory card, it's taking about two seconds per picture. That means that it's gonna be writing pictures to the memory card for about two minutes. Not a big deal, right? Not if I don't need to take more pictures, but it also limits me from doing lots of basic tasks. Watch what happens when I hit the record button, or even if I try to change the shutter mode. This is what life is like with a memory card that's too slow for your camera. This was an exaggerated scenario with the slowest card I could find and the camera with the biggest possible files. Let's see how it shoots with a faster memory card. You can see it shoots at the same pace up until the point when the buffer fills up and then it slows down significantly. This is a process called buffering. However, once the buffer's full, the camera is able to write the pictures to the card much faster and thus it returns to normal functionality in less than half the time. Therefore, buffering is less of a problem with fast cards than it is with slow cards. If you shoot very slowly, it will not make any difference and you can save yourself a lot of money by buying an inexpensive slow card. But if you shoot any sort of action, sports, or if you like to bracket your shots, or if you have a camera that produces big 60 megapixel files, you should probably consider getting a faster card. You should know the megabytes per second written on the card is not the same unit of measurement as the megabits per second that video bit rates are recorded in. One megabyte is equal to eight megabits. Let's just use round numbers. If your camera records video at a bit rate of 80 megabits per second, you would need a card that writes at 10 megabytes per second. Again, eight bits are in one byte. If you want a fast card, you should understand the difference between UHS-2 and UHS-1. Older UHS-1 standard has only one row of pins, 
whereas the UHS-2 standard has two rows of pins, this is part of what it allows to write faster. There are UHS-2 cards out there that are not especially fast. The one thing you know is a UHS-1 card is never going to be the fastest card. You should also know that some cameras only support UHS-1. Now, UHS-2 is backwards compatible, so you can put your UHS-2 card in your UHS-1 camera and it will work fine, but you will not benefit from the improved speed. In fact, you've just wasted some money. Just buy a UHS-1 card instead. Some cameras, for example, the Sony a7R 3 and Sony a7 III, have two card slots, and slot number one supports UHS-2, and slot number two only supports UHS-1. So in that case, if you're putting two cards in the camera, you might buy two different memory cards just to save yourself some money by putting a less expensive UHS-1 card in slot number two. Be sure to look up the memory card standard that your camera supports. To add another layer of complexity to this, the memory card speed that's written on it is a theoretical maximum speed that's almost never realized in practice. The only way to find out how much performance you'll actually get out of any given memory card with your specific camera is to test it out. I wish there was a better way. You really need to just put a card in a camera and take as many pictures as possible and then measure the size of those pictures and then see how fast they wrote. There are people on the internet who might have done this for your camera. So if you search for it, you might be able to find somebody who can recommend a specific card. But we've seen widely varying performance out of cards that seem to have the exact same performance ratings and there's absolutely no consistency. Sometimes the same card will perform better with one camera than with another camera. Sometimes different cameras will perform better or worse with different cards. If you have tips for using memory cards, write them in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe for more free tutorials. Thanks and bye.